everyone, and welcome to the Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome, and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. I can also be followed over on Instagram and Facebook under the name The Little Blue Fly. And also at the end of this video, if you have enjoyed what you have watched today, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And of course, I always love comments because they're just, they're huge motivators, right? Whenever we hear something kind or many of you even give me different shortcuts um, to achieve something or just different ideas, um, it does, it inspires me. Um, many of you state that you are inspired by my videos and I absolutely am inspired by your comments. Okay, so here is our mood wall. I'm going to give a little update and a brief video on it. I was not a happy girl. I will just say that at all. I checked out from this project because I literally had to strip all the stain off and start over. But now that part is over. So that being said, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so here's the mood wall. We are getting there. So I actually start painting today. How about that? So we were gonna put paneling over here to the side and that didn't work out too well because it just, it, it made this wall too busy because there's already quite a bit going on here, a door and a window. And then, we, of course, the wall over to the side, we will be talking about that probably next video the color that I believe I'm going with. Okay, as you can see here on this part, it has a gloss on it. So I still have to apply it to all of the stained wood. I still have the bottom piece to do um, one more time and a little touch up right there in the corner but I will be using polycrylic, the semi-gloss, to give um, this wood a little bit of luster, because that's important. <laughs> I cannot even begin to tell you all how much I am in love having this wall opened up to this beautiful window, even though it frustrated me. I mean, just wow, because I had to strip it and redo it, but it's, it's okay, it's okay. So as you can see here, we have some markings because we were going to put up paneling because I love that look, but it was way too busy for this little space. Right there, you can see we're going to keep that mark there, right there, and at the bottom for now, because it's a story, right? It's when <laughs> we didn't know there was this gorgeous window behind the false wall, and we drilled a hole through it to run electricity um, out to the sunroom. Just think, if we would have went a little bit higher, we would have broke that glass such beautiful wood detailing here on this wall and the color which you should see on sunday because i'm telling you i am pulling an all-nighter on friday so today and saturday to get this finished for all of you Now we're going to do a little bit of spring decorating because I've been working so hard, right? Trying to make all of these different um, upgrades in the sunroom and in the living room. And it takes so much time that I haven't been able to really get into spring decorating all that much. But Lord Baxter, I will be introducing you to some of his heritage today for those of you that are new. Here is, um, the floor is actually dirty, but I painted 
that Harlequin runner on the floor. I do have a video on that. And this piece here was a Facebook Marketplace find. The two lamps are called, if you just, um, I'll try to put a link in. I'm not the best at that. I am trying to get better, but it is called a clove stem lamp, S-T-E-M lamp. Um, you can purchase them from multiple sites. I always say with lamps, wait for them to come on sale because they do uh, 25 to 30% off and that really helps. Okay, here's a big bag of heavy, heavy books. Uh, I actually purchased this big, like, what, comforter bag, and then also a couple other bags for $5. Facebook Marketplace find. And in all these books, there was a wonderful treasure to be found, for sure. So many different colors. Okay, I love this. This is the treasure. It's just an old, um, the original copyright was in the early 30s. And then the last, this one here was in the 40s. Love the colors. Um, I, I like how it has the gold highlighting. It goes perfect with my staircase. I do not have the full set. However, I do have 10 of them, so now I can just do a search. It's all about the adventure, it's all about the journey, and I'll see if I can find more. But today, this works nicely, and it was a pleasant surprise finding these. So I tucked them off into the corner. I also will be doing a little bit of decorating in front of that mirror up on top. And I just really want to pull everything together in this space um, with the wonderful fairy tale feel. I first, well, let's start here in the center. I recently thrifted this basket. I love how it just swoops down right up front, how it gets very thin right there in the center. And that is a forged, twisted um, iron handle. And it goes all along the basket. I normally have this in my kitchen. I tucked some more old books over to the side and one down at the bottom because I need it for a little bit of height. You'll see here in just a moment. What I love about these books is they, you can use these anywhere because of the neutral tones. So I just thought it would um, be just the perfect color for inside this basket. This next piece I actually purchased from Ross for just $14.99. It was all white. I did do a DIY on this piece um, a few years back and it was so much fun. Again, it was all white so I just added on the golds and warmed up the white and it was fun painting the basket and I used some aging wax. Um, so there is a video out on this. And again, $14.99 from Ross. I was inspired by Mackenzie Childs to try my hand at it. And I must say, I really like this piece a lot. So I placed it right on top of the book inside of the basket. And again, it's all about achieving the fairy tale whimsy feel because nothing makes me more happy than that. Now to brighten things up a little, 
I have some blue and whites, a couple candle stands. These were Facebook Marketplace finds. Beautiful, there's actually uh, three of them, but I will just be using two today. And a Bombay, yes, vintage Bombay. Okay, as you can see, it's giving now a whole different feel. Well, just a little. But I want to point out, when you look up in um, at my lithographs up here, that blue is going to pull from Rumpelstiltskin, the Frog Prince, and a little Red Riding Hood. And I am loving the blue and whites. And how perfect inside the basket to add in some blue and white eggs. Now I am not remembering where, if these were a, um, <laughs> I was going to say egg bay, <laughs> eBay or Facebook marketplace. <laughs> oh, what a nut. <laughs> Long day. Maybe too much stain, too much wood stain in the brain. Who knows? <laughs> okay, so I placed them inside the basket with a little bit of moss and um, it just really complements the candle holders and just helps to bring in a little bit more of the blue and white, which you will see at the end of it all, it just pulls together absolutely beautifully. Over to the right, I did take three of the books down and place them up front. Love the look, adds a little bit of depth, more interest for sure. And now to introduce you to some of Lord Baxter's heritage. This is Lord Elderberry. He is known for wearing such fashionable silk ties. What I do, the frame was purchased from Hobby Lobby, and what I do is I just go online and I find these fabulous, fun, fairy tale, whimsy images, and then I take them to um, Office Max and I have them uh, copy out on their thick, um, it's a thick paper, and I bring them home and I place them in frames. And here's another frame from Hobby Lobby, just some old books. Perfect for this setting. I love all the aged detail on the frame and in the books. You don't always have to just use a book. You can always use pictures of books as well. And again, all these images came from online. Okay, here is Mr. Longbottom. He's the butler and always suited for service. Doesn't he have the most gentle and kind eyes? I absolutely love Mr. Longbottom. The perfect gentleman to greet you at the door. So kind. Okay, this here is the gardener. And this is Mr. Down Feathers. He went out and gathered us some onions today for our soup. <laughs> He's so much fun. And this fine lad right here, he's in need of a name. So let's play the name game again. 
I definitely see him as being a young lad. And here are all of the fun frames. And over to the right, I added Lady Radican Parsnippity. You know, her radish bonnet, it's going to be all the rave this spring. Isn't it gorgeous? I love her radish bonnet. <laughs> She's playing out in the garden with, with Mr. Downfeathers. He probably made the bonnet for her. Okay, so I placed blue taper candles in the taper holders. They are by Northern Lights, and they were wrapped in this paper, so I'm just going to keep the extra in there. And we're going to hide, we're going to hide the paper a little bit with just a little um, a faux sedum stem. This was purchased from Maryfield Garden. Love the lavender color with the green and it goes so well with the blue down here at the bottom is my antique copper boiler pot this was a facebook marketplace find and up here to the top things are moving around here at the cottage i took the copper teapot that has my pansies planted inside for the perfect touch. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and come back to see us on Sunday.